بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. My dear brothers and sisters and my dear viewers, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته. My name is Riyad Rizazi and I welcome you back into another episode of Reflections of Ramadan. Today, inshallah تعالى, we'll be talking about obedience to the parents in this blessed month. Our parents, honoring our parents. It's a very, very, you may say, some of you may say, yeah, it's a very important topic. It's a sad topic, you know, when we look at what's happening out there, our sons and daughters and problems and conflicts with the families and whatnot. So I think we need to explain the importance of honoring the parents in Al-Islam. My brothers and, and, and sisters, uh, parents normally, they sacrifice everything for the sake of their children, to provide for their children, and give for their children, to please their children. And sometimes, what do they get in return? Some unfortunate bad treatments from their children. The latest thing I have heard, which is something quite very you know, unfortunate, it was actually in the news, about a guy who stabbed his mother to death in a Muslim country who stabbed his mother to death because she refused to approve his marriage with some girl. And this guy goes out and he stabs her. My brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, we have to understand the importance that Islam really gives to the parents. Be with, if they are Muslims or not Muslims. But honoring the parents in Islam in fact, it's something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in parallel to his tawheed, in parallel to his oneness. بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وقضى ربك أن لا تعبدوا إلا إياه وقضى ربك أن لا تعبدوا إلا إياه وبالوالدين إحسانا and Allah, your Lord, has decreed that you worship not but Him and that you be good to your parents. My brothers and sisters, obedience or disobedience to the parents in, is in fact considered to be a major sin in Al-Islam. The Prophet Muhammad والسلام, says in this hadith reported by Bukhari and Muslim and narrated by Abi, by Abi Bakrah, not Abu Bakr, by Abi Bakrah, he says, رضي الله عنه وأرضاه that the Prophet Muhammad عليه الصلاة والسلام says ألا أخبركم بأكبر الكبائر don't you want me to tell you about the major sins don't you want me to tell you about the major sins and then the Sahaba said yes رسول الله please tell us about the major sins and then the Prophet Muhammad عليه الصلاة والسلام says the first major sin is associating someone with the worship of Allah which means shirk and the second major sin right after you know shirk the prophet muhammad says dishonoring the parents disobedience to the parents is considered to be a major sin in al-islam and the prophet was reclining والسلام, and then he stood up when he says Ala wa zool, Ala wa zool, Ala wa false testimony false testimony false testimony he repeated that three times Meaning that you testify that you have heard somebody said something which that person hasn't said, or you testify that you have seen something that person done something which that you know which that person didn't do and whatnot. That's called false testimony. But let's go back to the second segment of the hadith, whereby the Prophet وسلم, says, disobedience to the parents is considered to be a major sin. The Prophet Muhammad والسلام, also he says in this hadith reported by Al Nasa'i Wal Bazzar, uh, this hadith is also reported by Al Hakim bi Sanadin uh, Jayyid, uh, and this hadith is narrated by Abdullah ibn Umar. Anh, 
that the Prophet Muhammad says, Thalata, la Allah Three kinds of people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ignore, will neglect in the day of judgment. Who are they? Three kinds of people. Number one, al the one who is who dishonors his parents. He may come with mountains of good deeds. He may come with mountains of charity and salah and siyam and qiyam. But because he's been dishonoring, disobeying his parents or her parents, he will be amongst and all she will be amongst the losers. The one who dishonor his parents, Allah will not look at him in the day of judgment. Meaning, he will be ignored, he will be neglected, he will be amongst the losers. In the day of judgment. That's number one. Number two, you know, al شيء العاقل لوالديه and then you have المرأة المترجلة women that act like men number two women that act like men women that behave like men that walk like men dress up like men talk like men Allah will ignore that woman she will be amongst the losers in, in the day of judgment and number three at the youth at the youth is the one who has no protective jealousy no ghira he sees maybe his wife, you know, going out, you know, with a hijab, shaking hands with whomever she wants. He doesn't really care. Or his daughter going out half naked with the upper cut, lower cut, whatever it is. You know, he does not care. He has no ghira. Allah will not look at these three types of people in the day of judgment. But again, what matters here is the first segment of the hadith whereby the Prophet Muhammad says, Al-Aqul walidayh. It is considered to be a major sin. My brothers and sisters, my dear viewers, really, my sons and daughters, I am talking to you from the bottom of my heart. And I'm trying and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I really would love you also to, to listen to me with, with your heart. I love you. And I'm telling you this because I really care about you. Your parents, your parents, your parents, ummuk, 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 your mother, your mother, your mother. And then your father, as the Prophet Muhammad says. Yes, indeed. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the obedience of the parents in parallel with his tawheed in so many ayat. He says, بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم in سورة الإسراء أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وقضى ربك أن لا تعبدوا إلا إياه وبالوالدين إحسانا إما يبلغن عندك الكبر أحدهما أو كلاهما فلا تقل لهما أف فلا تقل لهما أف ولا تنهرهما وقل لهما قولا كريما واخفض لهما جناح الذل من الرحمة وقل رب ارحمهما كما ربياني صغيرا الله has decreed that you worship not but him and that you be good to your parents when they reach a certain age and sometimes they talk too much Sometimes they may be nagging too much, but you know what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفٍ وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا Don't even say off to your parents. Don't even say, oh, why? Oh, you talk too much. Oh, why me again? Don't even say that oh to your parents. Don't raise your voice against your parents. They, they are your parents. They have sacrificed everything, regardless of what they do. You may come and tell me, well, you know what? My parents, they have not given me my rights. Well, you know what? Walau zalamak, walau zalamak, walau zalamak. Even if they oppress you, even if they oppress you, even if they oppress you, they are still your parents, you have to obey them, you have to, you know, uh, honor them. And that's between them and Allah. Whatever they do towards you, that's between them and Allah. But we, regarding you and them, you still have to respect and honor them. Why? Because they are your parents. Just because they are your parents in Al Islam. This is how we regard parents. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah An-Nisa, ayah number 36, وَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Worship Allah and do not associate anything with Him 
وَبِلْ وَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانَ And that you be good to your parents. Right after Tawheed, Allah talks about obedience to the parents. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, ayah number 83, وَإِذْ أَخَذْنَا مِيثَاقَ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ لَا تَعْبُدُونَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ لا تعبدون إلا الله وبالوالدين إحسانا We took covenant from Bani Israel that you worship none but Allah and that you be good to your parents that you obey your parents Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ahqaf ayah number 15 وَوَصَّيْنَا الْإِنسَانَ وَوَصَّيْنَا الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ إِحْسَانًا And we have in order the insan, the son of Adam, to be good to his parents, to treat them with ihsan, with excellence, with respect, with honor. Why? Because they are your parents. They are your parents. The Prophet Muhammad says, إثنان يعجلهم الله في الدنيا قبل الآخرة. This hadith is very sound and authentic. إثنان يعجلهم الله في الدنيا والآخرة. The same hadith is also narrated by Abi Bakr bin Naf. Abi Bakr and reported in by Ibn Hibban, رحمة الله عليه. That the Prophet Muhammad عليه الصلاة والسلام says إثنان يعجلهم الله في الدنيا قبل الآخرة. Two types of sins. Whosoever commits them, Allah سبحانه وتعالى will hasten. The punishment upon that person in this life before the hereafter. Two types of sins. What are they? Number one, عقوق الوالدين. Dishonoring the parents. Dishonoring the parents. Being unkind to the parents. Disobeying the parents. And number two, fornication. Fornication or adultery. Whosoever commits these two sins, Allah will afflict the punishment upon those who commit these two sins in this life before the hereafter. And remember, my brothers and sisters, whatever goes around comes around. كَمَا تَدِينُ تُدَانِ إِفْعَلْ مَا شِئْتَ كَمَا تَدِينُ تُدَانِ Do whatever you wish, or do as you wish. You know, إِلَّمْ تَسْتَحِي فَفْعَلْ مَا شِئْتَ كَمَا تَدِينُ تُدَانِ Whatever really goes around comes around. If you were to treat your parents with kindness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless you or may bless you with kids that will treat you the same. And if you were to treat your parents with unkindness, with disrespect, Allah may afflict you with kids that will treat you the same. Why? Because what goes around comes around. Wallahi, we have seen it. You may have seen it as well. Let me share a couple examples of maybe just maybe two, three illustrations with you here, uh, which I have, you know, uh, not witnessed, but some of them, in fact, they were so true that happened in some prominent Muslim countries. A guy in the middle, you know, people saw him in the street dragging an old man. An old man dragging him, and then some people came in and said, What are you doing? This is an old man. Why are you dragging him? Abe, come on, have some shame, have some haya. Allah may afflict you with kids that will treat you the same. Why? Because what goes around comes around. Wallahi, we have seen it. You may have seen it as well. Let me share a couple examples of maybe just maybe two, three illustrations with you here, uh, which I have, you know, uh, not witnessed, but some of them, in fact, they were so true that happened in some prominent Muslim countries. A guy in the middle, you know, people saw him in the street dragging an old man. An old man dragging him, and then some people came in and said, What are you doing? This is an old man. Why are you dragging him? Abe, come on, have some shame, have some haya. And then the old man says, No, leave him, leave him. He's my son. He's your son? And then they went beating up the son. You're doing this to your own father? I would thought he was just like an old man, but this is your own father. You're dragging him in the street, you know, like this, an old man. And then the father said, please, 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 don't hit my son. Don't beat him because, wallahi, I did the same thing to my father. I did the same to my father. Another man took his own dad and his son was with him. He took him on a ride. They went to this fostering home. And then he dropped his father there. And then he came back on the way, his little son told, told him, Dad, where did you take grandpa? The dad says, I just took him to this fostering home, they'll take care of him. Why, dad? Well, you know, they will take care of him. Your dad, your grandpa's become old, he talks too much, they need people to take care of him. You know, we need to change him to feed him. You know, so let, him, let them take care of him. And then the son said, okay, dad, it's all right. Then when you grow up, I will do the same thing to you. What goes around comes around. Another very interesting story that happened. A guy in a Muslim country again, dragged, he took his father on a ride, he took him in the middle of the desert, 
And the father was asking him, Dad, you know, Sonny, where are you taking me, Habibi? Where are you taking me? And then the son was telling him, just, just be quiet. And then he took him in the, you know, in the middle of nowhere. And then he says, I'm going to kill you. In the desert, I'm going to kill you. Why? Why? I'm your dad. Why? No, I'm going to kill you. I'm sick of you, dad. Khalas. I've made up my mind, this is here too much. All these problems happen between me and my wife. You're the cause of all our, you know, all these problems. So khalas, I'm going to get rid of you. And uh, the father said, okay, son, if you want to kill me, please, you see that rock there? You kill me right there. Take me to that rock. And then you just kill me there. The son said, does it matter healed by that rock? The father said, yes. Because wallahi, that's what I killed my own father. What goes around comes around. So be careful, my brothers and sisters, on how you treat your parents. Be careful how you treat them. Be careful how you talk to them. Be careful how you, you know, you, you know, if you, in fact, especially your mother, how you treat your mother. Ummuk, ummuk, ummuk. When this man came to the Prophet Muhammad, who should be my best companion, Ya Rasulullah? Who should be my best friend? The Prophet says, Ummuk, your mother. And then who next? Your mother. Who's next? Your mother. And then the Prophet says, your father. So in Islam, the mother takes precedence. Yes, she does. Takes precedence. And this is how it is in Islam. Of course, the mother. Abu Hanifa, his mother came to him and she says, I have this, this uh, um, fatwa. It's a question. It's a question. And I need you to go and ask Amr Mudar, who was the mufti, ask him about this fatwa. I need a fatwa. And then Imam Abu Hanifa said, sure, mom. He went to Amr Mudar and he says, my mother has a question. And then he gave him the question. He asked him the question and Amr Mudar told Abu Hanifa, Abu Hanifa, I don't know what the answer is. You are the mufti. And then Abu Hanifa gave the answer to Amr Mudar. And Amr Mudar gave the answer to Abu Hanifa's mom. That is called Bir al walidi one man came to Abdullah ibn Umar from Yemen as he was carrying his mother from Yemen all the way to Mecca he's carrying her and performing tawaf and then he says oh Abdullah have I given my mother her right have I given her her right he says no he says no you have not given her her right. You have not, this is, doesn't even equate just one contraction when she was giving birth to you. All this that you're doing to your mother, carrying her, performing tawaf, is not equivalent to not even one single contraction that she was having when she was giving birth to you. Go into the pain of labor. Musa asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah, I want to see my partner in Jannah, my companion in Jannah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Oh Musa, go to this place. There is an old sort of like a, a cave, and then you will find your partner in Jannah. Musa goes, scrutinizing from very far so an old woman a frail old woman is this kid washing her cleansing her feeding her and then he would go out and then Musa came to her and then he says oh mother who's that kid who was here serving you she says that's my son but Musa wanted to understand what's so special about this son we all serve our mothers. But what made him so special that he will be my partner, my companion in Jannah? So he asked her. And then she says, what do you see? He serves me, he helps me, cleans me, feeds me. Feeds me, cleans me, helps me. Musa asks, is there anything special about him? She says, yes. Every day I make dua for him. And I say, oh Allah, make my son the companion of Musa in Jannah. 
And then Musa told her, Allah has answered your call. I'm Musa. And your son will be, inshallah, my companion in Jannah. All it takes, all it takes is one dua from your mother. A broken heart mother. Just one dua coming from her with sincerity. That can be the vehicle that can drive you to Jannah. One dua coming from your mother or your father. In fact, the Prophet Muhammad Ali when he says in Sahih Muslim, a dua of a father or a mother to her son or daughter is mustajab. That's why one man from the pious predecessors he used to cry when his mother passed away. He used to cry so much that they asked him, why do you cry so much after the death of your mother? And he says, how can I not cry? One of the gates of Jannah has just been locked before me. One of the gates of Jannah has just been locked before me. My mother. My mother passed away. If your mother is alive, go to her today before tomorrow and ask her for one dua. Give her a hug and say, Mom, one dua for me. That's all. Maybe that dua can be the vehicle that can drive you to Jannah, inshallah. But if she is dead, cry and cry blood. Because maybe crying is not enough. One boy wrote a letter to his mom. And he says, Mom, today I have cleaned my room, $10. I have shoveled the snow, $15. I have washed the dishes, $10. I have done my homework, I have done this, I have done that, and at the end, he says, this is the total. She took that same paper, turned it to the other side, and then she says, I carried you in my womb for nine months, free of charge. I carried you in my womb for nine months, free of charge. While I was giving birth to you, it was so painful. I thought I was going to die. Free of charge. When I used to get sick, I used to spend the whole night sitting by you, just waiting, sitting next to you, and making dua for you, crying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, asking Him to give you shifa. Free of charge. I used to feed you before I used to feed myself, free of charge. I nursed you. I took care of you. When you became a teenager and used to go out and come home very late, I wouldn't go to sleep. I would be sitting, waiting for you. You're having fun outside with your friends. And I would be sitting home worrying making dua of my son, my daughter, my son, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect you. Free of charge. You broke my heart so many times. I never asked Allah to curse you, but in fact, I used to make dua to Allah to guide you, to guide you and protect you. free of charge and the total at the end she says love because I love you so my only request from my dear brothers and sisters who are viewing me today if your parents are alive go to them today 
pick up the phone and call them if they're very far away. And just ask for forgiveness. Ask for forgiveness. And ask them to make dua for you. Especially in this blessed month. That dua could definitely be, inshallah, Wallahi, the vehicle that can drive you to Jannah. Do it. And do it today. Jazakumullah khair. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.